Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews and today I'm talking helicals for 5.8 GHz. I've got a couple here, a couple of helical antennas. Now these are high gain antennas for use with circularly polarized systems. That's where you have a um, skew planar or a cloverleaf antenna on your transmitter. Then these antennas will give you a whole lot of gain, a bit like a Yagi or a patch, but they work with circularly polarized radio signals, which is great because on 5.8 you really need circular polarization to avoid all the multi-pathing and reflections and the little dropouts and all sorts of stuff. So that's what you need. Now I've got two here and it's really interesting. They represent opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of quality and performance. So let's have a close look at them and see why they're so different. And here they are. We've got, this is the one from Circular Wireless and it's, uh, it's quite expensive. This is one from, I've got this one from High Model and it's quite cheap. Now, what about value? Because everyone knows about price. You can tell a price by looking at the sticker. But what about the value? How well do these things work? Well, to be honest, I really don't have to do much more than look at these to see which one of these is going to work really well and which one is really not going to be very good at all. Let's, let's do some comparisons. Now, as you can see, the one from Circular Wireless, it has this plastic former so that there's, there's no way this wire can move. It's really rigidly held on that plastic former. It has a solid metal base as you can see there in a SMA connector. And if, if we do a, a close up look, you can see that where the wire comes through, notice how close it is to that base there at the bottom edge just down here. Notice how it hugs the base there. And that provides what they call a, some matching. It provides a level of matching so that the signal that comes down that wire is closely matched to the actual impedance of the cable we're using through that SMA connector. So that means this has a low SWR. Most of the energy that comes down the wire will actually end up going out the cable into your receiver. So it will transfer a lot of that received signal to your receiver. You get good results with that. And because this wire can't change in dimensions, can't bend or twist, then it's going to be consistent from one day to another in terms of the performance. So that's brilliant. This is obviously made from, looks like a laser cut acrylic and it's really a nicely made little piece of antenna with a good quality SMA connector there, gold plated for minimum loss. So yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. By way of comparison, here is the, the cheap one from highmodel.com. I'm sure other companies sell them, but it's obviously made in China now. If you look at it, you can see where that wire comes through. It's a bit harder with the reflections here, but where that wire comes through, you can see it's actually a long way from the back reflector here. That probably means they're not using any kind of matching. They haven't tested these to see that they're, they're actually matched properly. So a lot of the signal that comes down this wire may end up just being lost by bouncing back out due to the poor match. And look at this also, look. See, this, this wire is completely free to move inside this plastic tube. It's ridiculous. That means there's, there's no way you can be sure it's not gonna be altered or even vibration, whatever. It's terrible, absolutely terrible. I'm not impressed with that at all. It also has an SMA connector, but one thing worth noting is look at the size of the reflectors. Hold on, I'll zoom out a bit here. That's right, look at the size of the reflectors. You'll notice it on the circular wireless one. There's a huge base plate there. On the Chinese one, it's really quite small. And yeah, you notice it also, this has its connector right in the middle. So whereas the circular wireless one, the, the helical doesn't actually stop and go in, on the cheap Chinese one, the helical aspect actually stops and it bends right across the middle. So now nah, that's not good, not good at all. But more importantly is the dimensions of this thing. If you compare the dimensions of these antennas, you'll notice something very important. They're not actually the same. The, the, this high model one is a much larger diameter than the circular wireless one, which means it's probably not even working on the right frequency. I mean, ah, uh, you know, did the people who made this just get to think, oh, here's a piece of plastic tube. We can wind some wire in there and then we can solder it to a piece of copper at the bottom, put a plug on it and we'll call it a helical. So yeah, I'm not totally impressed with this. It's, uh, it's very cheap and I mean cheap, not economical, I mean cheap. But what I'm going to do is in some videos coming up, I'm gonna be doing some comparative testing. Now, one thing I noticed also with this is that this is left-hand polarized. This is right-hand polarized. This didn't say it was left-hand polarized. I just ordered it. And uh, so you have gotta be careful what you order. This obviously would not work at all well with a right-hand polarized cloverleaf on the transmitter or skew planar. So uh, I've got a set of each types of antennas for the transmitter. So an upcoming video, as soon as my exemption comes through, I'll be doing some tests. We'll see how much gain these have and how much gain this has due to comparisons. But uh, honestly, when it comes to FPV gear, especially antennas, uh, it doesn't always pay to cut corners by buying the cheap stuff, but we'll find out. I'll put it to the test. We'll see which one actually works the best. And I threw the old dial calipers on these antennas to get an idea of that difference in diameter. The circular wireless antenna has an external diameter 
of about 17.2 millimeters, which is about right for 5.8 gigahertz on the bands we on the frequencies we use. This 19.5, so it's two millimeters bigger. That's enormous difference, and that but takes it out of the band that we'd use for our FPV on 5.8. Ah, oh, bad monkeys. So yeah, um, if you're tempted to buy one of these, wait till you see how it works out in real world, because antennas are funny things. Sometimes they don't always obey the laws of physics in the way you'd expect, so sometimes the ones that look dud work well. But uh, we'll find out in the practical test. In the meantime, if you've got any questions, stick them on the video, comments on the video, and stay tuned because there's more stuff coming up, hopefully with lots of flight videos very soon. In the meantime, from me, it's back to the bench.